All right, thumbs up or thumbs down for the turtleneck? What are we feeling? Now, greetings. I get a absolute ton of comments from freshmen for, you know, incoming students to UCSD, you know, which is this university I go to or transfer students, but either way, new incoming students. And they ask things like how easy is it to switch majors? How can I do well in classes? You know, what should I do? How do I get internships? Things like that. So I've decided to just compile a list, list of five of my major tips to freshmen. And not, and this isn't just for, you know, UCSD freshmen or, you know, UCLA freshmen or whatever. This is for, you know, any freshman. I try to keep it broad so that it's applicable to everyone. First, if you could hit that like button down below, you don't have to tell anyone in case, in case you hate me, but you know, you'd be helping your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. Or if you dislike it, hit the dislike button twice because that's a mega dislike, so. There you go. Now we're gonna hop right into it, but stick to the end to get a secret bonus tip. So that'll be a total of six, five plus one. So my first tip is to live and experience freshman year. Now that may sound very philosophical to you, but what I mean is this, appreciate every moment of freshman year. I have some of my most fun and best memories from even just the fall quarter of my freshman year, you know, UCSD is separated into quarters. So in this case, if you're on semester system, it'd be the fall semester of your freshman year. The reason I say this is because, you know, depending on the context in which you grew up and where you grew up, going to college is such a drastically different experience, even though you may not think it, especially if you move ac across the country, like I did. I'm from New Jersey. I grew up there for 14 years of my life uh, and then moved to California and hardly knew anyone here. And just that difference, the difference just between even New Jersey culture and California culture, the way people said things differently, the different words for things like California, I didn't know what board shorts was, you know, bathing suits. I didn't, you know, there was such a, a different culture shock that people don't think about. So if you are out of state, maybe you, you know, will experience something similar. I had never tried avocado before. I was 18 and I had never tried avocado because I lived in New Jersey and that's just not popular there, you know? Just so that difference, that cultural difference and just seeing different weather and just all the new people, it was truly a surreal experience. So what I mean by living your freshman year is just appreciating the moments and, you know, taking those mental pictures and those mental memories, you know, just for the future. Cause when you think back to it, you know, you're going to smile. And I want to say like the first week of college, honestly, first of all, felt like a month and it was probably some of the most fun I've ever had. So a second tip, it's sort of a extension of the first tip is to go out and meet people. Talk to your flatmates or your suite mates, your roommates, talk to them. Join student groups, study groups, go to classes, talk to people. Because freshman year is like the time to meet people. It's taking all of these people who usually don't know people, they might know, you know, some people from high school there, but if you go to a fairly large university, you know, you might not even ever see the people that you did know. So everyone freshman year is just really open to meeting new people, especially like when you have your, your first week when everyone's moving in, like everyone wants to talk to everyone. I'm sure you'll notice it. Or if you're already in college, you'll, you would have noticed that, that just freshman year and especially your first semester or first quarter there, Everyone is just super open. They're not judgmental. It's because everyone is going through the same exact situation. It's a new, it's a new experience. Now I'm not saying as you go on in your college career as sophomore, junior, senior, it becomes impossible to meet new people. But by that time, people have already established their friends groups or their friend groups and their study groups. So they're not really seeking any more people, I guess, any more friends, but freshman year, everyone is trying to establish that friend group. So during that time, I think it's really important to, you know, surround yourself with people who you could imagine being friends with in the future for the next four years, or even further beyond that, because, you know, it's, it's important to have a good support network in college. So I think the first semester, first quarter at your university is really important to you know, develop those friendships and that support network. But you know, don't stress about it. Don't try to be that like guy that you know, you're out there for the networking because you know, people can see right through that. So just 
be who you are, find your friends, everyone does, or, you know, most people do, I wouldn't stress too much about it, but, you know, just be open, just, you know, if, if one of your sweet mates says, hey, do you want to get food, you know, even if you're not comfortable in that situation, if you're not used to getting food with strangers, just say yes anyway. Now, my third tip is for academics, so, this may seem obvious, but actually go to class, like, it's so easy to just go to class and take notes and pay attention. And that will save you so much struggle and headache in the future when you're trying to study for exams if you just simply went to class and you don't have to watch, like, all the podcasts to, ca to catch up on the notes. A lot of people struggle with the transition from high school to college and that's because in high school you pretty much always had to go to class. It was mandatory and you were expected to be there. Or in college, for a majority of classes, like, the professor's not going to know if you're there or not, usually, if it's a large lecture. Sometimes they have participation grades, but usually they're a minute 2 to 5% of your grade. And, you know, if you don't show up a couple days, it's hardly going to affect your grade. But, you know, not showing up, it's just like, it's like the easiest thing to do is show up. So a big thing I noticed my freshman year was like a lot of people would just, now that they had the opportunity, would just sort of skip class, you know, hang out, play video games. And that's awesome, I think. It's important, say if you're struggling, you know, with mental health, maybe take a day off. Like, I think that's fine, but try not to make a habit of it. So when you just have to go to class for one or two hours, just, you know, put your phone away and just actually sit there and pay attention. It's only one or two hours, you know, per class. And I found that if you put your phone away and you don't look at it, time actually goes faster. So the classes where I was, you know, constantly on Snapchat, looking at Instagram, Reddit, or something like that, it just felt like every minute was so slow. Like the two hours or the hour I was in class felt like five hours. I, I did like some, you know, personal experiments where I would, you know, put, try to just put my phone away for the entire class and those classes just breezed by. Another thing I noticed is when I'm in class, I actually physically write out my notes instead of typing them. I found that I just learn better that way. I remember more things. Uh, for some classes, if I don't think it requires a lot of memorization or it's like an easier class, I'll just type notes or not even take notes. But if it's like a really, you know, STEM class, math class, uh, history, like GE that requires like a lot of memorization, I typically write my notes by hand. So that's also a good tip for future exams. And if you want to know some more tips about studying for exams in college, you could check out my, you know, ACE exams video. I had a special guest. His name was Jeremy Films in that video. He gives you four tips as well. So you can find that link in the description below. Just realized it looks sort of short on camera right now. Don't worry. We're a short king, lads. No, I'm not that short, I say. I'm actually 6'9", so. So this tip also applies to discussion sections. So what you'll find in a lot of colleges, in addition to your lecture, you'll also have a discussion section or some sort of lab section, and usually these aren't mandatory. So since they're not mandatory, a lot of freshmen and a lot of college students would just skip them because you don't learn any new topics, you're not, you know, they're not taking attendance. It's mostly just to discuss topics you're currently going over. But the thing that I noticed is, is for a lot of STEM classes is they actually give you homework answers in the discussion section. So if you're in a math class and let's say you have a problem set due during that week, in that discussion section, they'll either ask for questions on the homework or I even had uh, teaching assistants literally do every problem on the homework in the discussion section. Ultimately, just going to the discussion section for, you know, whatever the hour it is per week, you can save yourself like four hours doing homework. And that's the same for programming assignments. Now, the fourth tip is to take advantage of your university's resources. Universities have so much money. I get so many parking tickets. They must have so much money that they have a lot of resources that a lot of people just either forget or don't take advantage of. But first off, the resources that you should check out are office hours. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say like, I go to every office hours and it changes my life, because I don't do that. I have gone to office hours on a few rare occasions, but I can tell you if I did, go to every office hours, I would definitely have higher grades than I do now. But the times that I did go to office hours is because I had questions on assignments and that is a very tangible thing that I think you guys should remember is office hours are a great time to literally just ask homework questions. So if you have a programming assignment or you have some math worksheet due or you know, you've got some problem set due and you just can't figure out how to do a problem, 
office hours are a great way to almost just get the answer for the question. Some of the some of the programming assignments that I've had to do, I literally could not have solved them, could not have solved them without the help of going to office hours. Now, a common thing in computer science classes specifically is lab hours. So in lab hours is when you can usually go to a computer science lab, hop on a desktop and do some coding. Um, and usually there's like tutors walking around in which you can ask them for help on like bugs that you have or hints towards the solution. And I say always go to that. Like even if you are really good at computer science going in, I'm going to guarantee you there's probably going to be something that, you know, stumps you at some point and you don't want that stump to occur 20 minutes before the deadline and you're at home. So what I always do is like I try to go to the, the, the lab when it's open, when there's, you know, tutors there and just taking advantage of that resource. Like some, some days I'll put in like 20 tutor tickets just cause I'm, you know, struggling. One thing my very first computer science teacher ever said was start early and start often. And that means basically start the assignment early on, like in the deadline and then start it often so do it regularly so that when it's an hour before the deadline and you're getting a null pointer exception you don't have to go through the stress of trying to figure that out and make sure all the output is correct basically tldr if you have homework questions just go to office hours super easy additionally some other you know campus resources are work out at the gym so you don't have to pay one go to your local university career center because a lot of them have resume building workshops you know UCSD's Career Center often has like actual companies come and talk and you can network with them. And like I've gone to a couple of them and there's really not that many people there. So definitely check out your Career Center. Other resources like uh, you most likely get Microsoft uh, Home Suite. I think it's called for free. So definitely make sure you get like all that free software, different deals of being a university student. And fun fact, if you are traveling and you're like, you want, you know, cheaper flights, if you go on STA travel, you can check that you're a student or under 31 and you can find really mad cheap flights that way. Also, if you're trying to get into museums, just if you say you're a student, they usually uh, give you a discount. So those are just a little, little extra tips of using resources. So my fifth tip, fifth, tip is to look into internships early and be proactive in your in the career space basically as a freshman a lot of things probably won't be open to you just because a lot of internships are for sophomores and juniors that's when a lot of people are like competing for those internships but there are definitely internships specifically designed for freshmen so definitely look into resources like that go on to your go on to linkedin or go on to your university's uh, internship listings resource most universities have them so for example ucsd has sort of a database of just companies that are currently hiring interns or even full-time employees they can get to through their website so definitely check that out and uh, even if you've got some free time go to the career fairs and just try to see what employers are looking for but don't get too much into the grind you know mentality when you're a freshman like still remember to enjoy freshman year enjoy make the memories like you don't have to be consistently on your grind 24 7 nor, nor do I think that's a healthy way to be honestly I don't think anyone should be on that grind 24 seven. Sure, you know, maybe browse internships twice a week, but don't like, don't never leave your room looking for internships because when you leave college, you're gonna miss having those memories. So definitely, if you got the free time, don't stress about it too much your freshman year, but definitely just try to be a little bit proactive. And that's something I wish I had done. My freshman year, I actually didn't really look into internships that much. I studied abroad the summer of my freshman year for five weeks. So internships weren't gonna work out usually. So I just, you know, got some regular job after I got back from studying abroad. Just be a little bit proactive is what I'm saying. And lastly, if you stuck with me this far, this is the bonus tip. Look into study abroad. And in addition to looking into study abroad, plan your classes because it is so easy to realize when you are a senior that you actually missed a class that you need to graduate and that it's only offered once per year and you didn't get into it. You know, it doesn't have to take that much time to see how many classes do you actually need? What classes are they? You know, what sort of electives are you planning on taking? Definitely things can change. 
And one thing I do realize that no one ever thinks about is when are those classes actually offered? Sometimes classes are offered during the summer, the spring, the fall, the winter, all the time. And sometimes they're only offered in the winter. Like sometimes they're only offered once per year with one professor and there's like a 50 person cap on it that you need to graduate. So definitely make sure you look into classes and when they're actually offered. Most universities publish their course catalog for the next academic year at some point. So just make sure you look out for that so that you can sort of plan your classes for the upcoming year and make sure that you'll still graduate on time. So once you've sort of planned your classes a little bit, then I would suggest looking into study abroad. Now, and I'm a mathematics and computer science major. So I definitely can assure you that there are classes is that can count towards your major as long as you argue with your department enough. What I did, I went to University of Edinburgh for four months to study abroad my fall of senior year or the, you know, the fall of my senior year. I'm a senior right now, so that was in the fall of this year. Basically, all I did was I grabbed a, a, a student form that was an undergraduate class petition. I said, here's the syllabus for the classes I wanna take. I want these to count for my major electives. I made sure they were like computer science or mathematics based, you know, made sure they were relevant and my department approved them to count. And then I mentioned earlier that I did study abroad for five weeks during the summer after my freshman year. That's all, That was a great opportunity because it was only five weeks. I, I traveled with UCSD professors and uh, I got some GE credit. So it didn't actually count towards my major, but it did count towards um, just satisfying general education requirements. So when I think about it, the, the most fun times I've had, I can think of three times. So the first time I think was my fall quarter freshman year. That is super fun. Again, live the experience. Then the studying abroad in New Zealand after my freshman year and then studying abroad my senior year fall quarter. Those were definitely the most fun times that I can actually remember and I honestly just can't toot the horn of study abroad enough. I made a couple videos about it and even some videos of when I was actually living in Edinburgh, Scotland, studying abroad. You can check out my study abroad videos in the description below. I hope you found those tips useful. If you have any other questions for me about maybe if you're going to UCSD or some other university and you have got questions, comment them down below and I'll try to answer them best that I can. Again, my name is Michael or really whatever you wanna call me. Tell me what you think about the turtleneck in the comments below. Consider first installing that like and subscribe button and then hitting it. If you are new to the channel, I make college advice, computer science, tech videos, and skip videos, but no one watches them because I am not. Look out for some of my future videos. I'm planning on doing some like coding with me things. So comment down below what sort of projects you'd want me to do sort of a tutorial on that you could basically follow along. I was thinking about maybe like some Python automation stuff, like making Python order food for you or making an online interactive resume, which I actually demonstrated in my um, How College Life Has Changed video, where I talk about how, you know, the current situation right now has impacted college life. So if you wanna check that out, you can find it in the description below. And remember guys, these are just five tips I noticed, you know, of being a freshman. Don't put too much stress on yourself. You know, it's definitely gonna be a transition for most people, but it was honestly some of the most fun I've ever had. And honestly, I would go back to freshman year and live it again. Now, I, I don't know if I'd wanna go through sophomore, junior, and senior year again. I would do study abroad again, but I don't know if I'd wanna do all those classes again, but definitely freshman year was super fun and to just get that sense of new, it's just a really awesome feeling. So. I can only sort of parallel it or equate it to when you maybe travel to a really, a, like a new country you've really been wanting to go to. You know, say you really want to go to Japan or something like that, and you finally go there and it's amazing and it's beautiful and everything's new and the culture's super new. That's how I felt freshman year a little bit. I mean, not as drastically that no one spoke a different language. Like I understood English. I mean, people did speak other languages. That's not what I'm saying, but it wasn't as drastic of a cultural difference, but you know, coming from New Jersey, which is a, you know, all the way across the country uh, and living there most of my life, the, the culture shock was definitely different, but honestly, I love the culture shock. So I hope you guys liked the video. Consider liking it um, for the owl, that young owl. And uh, <clears throat> my name is Michael, giving you bad British accents when you don't ask for them and college advice when you don't either. Consider tuning in next time for when I build a self-driving moped. Bye-bye.